Hey, welcome back to my channel. Faith is the key. My name is Zen. Thank you all for tuning in, liking, subscribing, and sharing. I'm truly grateful for what God is doing. God bless each and every one of you that are under the sound of my voice. I pray right now that I decrease so the Holy Spirit may increase, that it is his channel, that he do what he wants. It's the Father. It's the Son, Jesus Christ. I give them glory. I give them honor and praise. So again, welcome back. If you've been with me on this journey in this ministry, and welcome to all of you who have just subscribed and tuned in to this channel. If you don't know, Faith is the Key Ministry is about sharing testimonies of what Jesus has done in my life and those I've encountered. And that's the way he uses me, basically allows me to glorify edify his name but specifically through my trials my tribulations and that's why i'm so authentic that's why i'm so transparent because it's about me also being a deliverer my mantle is regarding deliverance and i'm also an intercessory prophet and seer prophet so in one of the ways god uses me is is heavy intercession deliverance and being able to just like i said stand in the gap and begin to pray for many people and intercede to see what the will is of God and the agenda he has for this individual life. So it's a privilege to pray for all of you that have subscribed to this channel. And again, I'm just so grateful and honored that the Lord is having his way. So I actually just got back from the gym and the Lord at the time while I was still studying, he kept putting on my heart about don't let trials traumatize you in. Because I don't know about y'all, but through me really rededicating my life back to God, December 29, 2019, it has been trial after trial, tribulation after tribulation. But that's also because as an intercessor, I'm ordained in some warfare. So I'm always going to go head to toe with demonic forces, with principalities, with powers. And God is continually growing me in that. That's the type of prophet I am. I'm confrontational. I'm a power prophet. But also, there's militaristic, basically. That's why God also uses my life and me to go through the journey to begin to get the insight, the strategies, and to gain wisdom through my trials so that I can be able to bring those who are assigned to me out of their demonic strongholds their oppressions, and so much more of what God wants to do and stand in the gap as an intercessor. And, you know, the one thing I realized was I have faith for everybody else after going through my trials and going through, but my faith began to decrease and become weak with me. And people that know me before my transformation and surrendering my life to God in 2019 in December they would know one thing they couldn't catch me slipping on was my faith. I was like, okay, yeah, you said this. All the odds stacked against me, but I'm like, what the father say? What did God say? I don't care what man say. I would have that mentality. And the Lord began to deal with me and said, Zen, you know, where's that faith you had? When you was in the world, you was ready to dive on everybody about me. But now you're still ready to fight for me. But what about fighting for yourself? What about believing and partnering with me? So God has been working with me, increasing my faith and having an expectation and a hope in him and renewing it. And I'm being transparent. It can be hard when you go after blow, after blow, after blow, hit after hit after hit. And the Lord knows what you can withstand. And see, what the Lord was telling me was, tell my people, don't get your perception of me skewed or begin to get hard hardened based on the trials you go through. See, yes, I am still a good father. I never stop being your dad. I never stop being Abba to you. However, your trials and tribulations are actually attributed to your mandate of what you're called to do in this earth, your assignment, your orders. Let me break that down for you. God is not just a father. He's a judge and he's a king. God has a kingdom. You know, he says in the word that the kingdom of God is within us. And then God also begins to tell us through his son, Jesus Christ, in the word that his kingdom is not of this world. It's not here. It's in heaven. And God also speaks about the fact that he is a judge, that he is just, he is righteous, he is holy. And we forget that. And for me as an intercessor, I want to give you understanding and language to say you can approach God as a father, but when you're going through to get trained and equipped for who you're called to be, 
who you're assigned to and to begin to equip those future generations, then you are dealing with God as a judge and you're dealing with God as a king. And when a king issues an order and a decree, that's it. It's done. We've seen that through Esther, how a decree was made over the Israelites and what they needed to do. However, and, and they couldn't undo the main thing, the main um, decree and order that they had, but instead there was an amendment or an addition or some would call it an addendum. And that's like in law and everything else where you're supplementing another order and decree without still changing or modifying the main thing, main decree. Because we know in a kingdom and with kings, once your word is released, it's your bond and that's God. And God will not disobey his word, his protocols, and his order. And we begin to look at that from the life of Jesus. See, we cannot get confused and think our trials are meant to just continue to hurt us. No, they're meant to teach us obedience. They're meant to teach us to become one with God. They meant to teach us to depend solely on him. And it's actually to increase our faith. It's actually to assess where we're really located at. You know, Abraham is a man of faith. But remember when he made the mistake and he ended up listening to his wife, Sarah, about and they end up conceiving Ishmael through Hagar? His faith was weak. He didn't give up on God. His faith was just weak. So God had to come back to him and change his perspective and say, hey, I told you what I told you. So now I got to give you a name change to get you to understand that my covenant still stands with you. I am who I said I am, that I will make you Abraham a father of nations. Do you believe? So once Abraham accepted his name change from Abram to Abraham and Sarah to Sarah, it was a distinct change immediately in the mindset. I'm going to believe God until the end. And what we fail to realize is that sometimes we can delay the hand of God when we try to get involved with allowing him to not allow our process to be the process that he picks for us. See, we're going to look at that in the life of Jesus. Excuse me, y'all. Look at Jesus. Jesus was one with the Father through yielding his life with the Holy Spirit. And the thing is this. When Jesus went to the garden in Gethsemane, he began to have questions like, Oh, God, I don't want to take this cup. I don't want to do this. But Jesus understood he had an assignment and a mandate to redeem mankind, to redeem sinners, to redeem all of us, to tear the veil so that we can repent have repentance and enter into the mercies of God, the grace of God, the unconditional stance of knowing that God can allow us in his presence through prayer, through intercession, through worshiping, because God's whole agenda was bringing his lost children back to his kingdom and them fulfilling, fulfilling their mandate in the earth by winning other lost souls. And your trial is an indication of who you're going to be able to minister to. Where God has placed you at, your environment was your training. The people who left and came in your life, that's a part of your training. That's a part of you studying and getting understanding of how God has wired you and who he has placed in your corner or why he's removed the person. God is doing that not to hurt you in a way to where he just doesn't care about your life. No, he's pruning you for your assignment. And he has to allow this to happen. See, Jesus understood that fully. Like when Jesus knew that he had to go and down a cross, he didn't want to take it. But he said, you know, nevertheless, let your will be done. Jesus did not once ever tell God he was not a good father. Jesus once did not ever say, oh, my God, this is this, this is that. No, Jesus stood and did what his father told him to do. Jesus understood that in order for him to ascend to his kingship, to rulership, also as a judge after he had already left heaven and became the manifestation in the flesh, the body of God, he understood that his trials were a part of his assignment and mandate in the earth. But he did not let, he, Jesus did not allow that to cause him to get bitter. He did not allow anger under any of those things. Was was Jesus sad for a moment when his friend Lazarus died in John 11? Yes, 
He was heartbroken, but he already knew that in his heart, his resolve was the father would raise him up. He already had that mindset to realize that he could separate the fact that God is a good father, but God is also a just judge and a king. And there's orders, there's instructions, there's a mandate. And you cannot let your trials and tribulations begin to taint your view of God as a father. You know, that that fatherhood and God and that, that father and sonship relationship that we enter into, that Romans 8, 15 tells us we are now adopted through the blood of Jesus and what he did at the cross don't allow the trials and the tribulations to hinder what God is trying to do in your life and hinder the relationship between you and him. You know, I was really struggling like, God, you know, I'm praying for everybody else. Y'all, I'm seeing them get miracles, supernatural breakthrough, money, everything. I'm fasting for all of the things that I would need. And yet I would, I would, I would just have to go back to God and cry, but I had to realize that I could not take it personal. God wanted to manifest miracles through my life. God wanted to move in signs and wonders through my life. I'm seeing God do creative miracles on me and through other people. I'm seeing God send angelic force and dispatching through my intercession. But sometimes I would just cry like, you know, God, what about me? You know, do you really love me? And I literally asked the question to God, like, Man, am I like 80% soldier to you and 20% daughter? And um, my friend, um, Obi was like, absolutely not. You're 100% a daughter to him, you know? And we we laughed and God actually laughed at me and just said, Lord, look how I wired this daughter of mine. But he, he helped me to realize that I needed to hope again and have expectations. That I lost my expectations along the way because I was seeing him doing it for everybody else. I'm seeing him move all type of ways for other people, but I'm looking like, you know, God, I'm still in this season. I'm still going through the same thing. I'm still having to go through this, but God has to allow the fruit of long suffering to really be produced in my life and patience because when I got the prophetic word over my life as in my destiny, God made me listen to that word over and over and over again. It's like a 15 minute word and then another word of my season that I'm in. And I had to realize your Trials and tribulations are because of the assignment. It's because the people that Jesus will save through you. It's because of the dead that will be raised through you. It's because of the miracle signs and wonders. It's because of the way that you will go into things. And also, he's teaching me and training me and settling my spirit. And even dealing with inadequacies, dealing with deficiencies, dealing with weaknesses. And that's what he wants me to come to him as a father and say, I can't do this dad on my own. I, I, can, I can't work this out on my own. I can't solve this situation on my own. I can't arrive at this solution in my own strength and my own might. And the Lord said it in the word, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit. And God is making me have a total dependency on him. And I have to build that stamina and that faith because where I'm going to go, I'm going to need that. I'm going to need to believe without a shadow of a doubt. I'm going to have to have that faith like never before. I'm going to have to stand like the giants in Hebrews 11. And when I realize what I am going through is just temporary for the glory of God to be manifested in my life. You know, most people say, girl, you walk in power, authority, man. But I'm like, you have to die. You have to die. I can honestly say it's none of me and it's all of Jesus. None of me. And as me and Jesus was just having a conversation, I'm learning in this season. Yes, I'm a bride. But right now I'm approaching him as a brother because I'm like, I want to learn the pattern of you, the way you dealt with our father. I want to walk Jesus as you walk with the father as one. And as a sister to you, I know I can learn your ways. And when I learn Jesus' ways, I learn the Father's ways. When I produce Jesus' heart in me and being transformed to the image of Christ, I am transformed as well into having the image of being one with my Father as Jesus was. And so will you all. And, you know, most people like to quickly say, well, that's Jesus. That ain't me. But the thing is, we have to get to a place in our mind to make up a resolve to say, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to hope again. 
I'm going to believe and I'm going to have faith and I'm going to partner with what your word says, even when I don't see it. And, and your circumstances is very dire. You know, it is hard. But at the same time, don't murmur, don't complain. Begin to be transparent and say, God, this hurts. Father, this hurts. And begin to even ask your father, why am I going through this? Now, will he always give a response immediately? No. But sometimes the wisdom come only through the process and once the trial has actually passed. Some, most of the time it's for me and I get the revelation. Like I'll have the whole discernment, but I'll, I'll be like, I can't put my finger on it, what you're doing, God. And then he'll be like, download. And now I'm able to come back and share what he's given to me which is to give his heart to you all. So I challenge you as a word of encouragement to really begin to separate, to understand that God is still a good father, but your trials and tribulations are not to traumatize you, to make you stagnant, but it's for your assignment and mandate to a judge, to a king. And when you understand that we are called set apart for his glory. We are his workmanship. We are his potter. I mean, clay pots and he's the potter. It will begin to be easier. It's easier said than done. And I know this from walking it out, from having to be broken many times, from having to yield, from struggling, from crying and everything else. But I can attest to you that the minute I change my mindset, which is repent, and shout out to Hope's Well um, brand. I'll put the link in here because I love what she does is, is evangelizing. And one of my things is God always called me to be his holy prophet, trust the prophet, secure. We all should be walking in holiness, but for me, it's like I have a, a sensitivity with things that I, I, can't, I can't do. But I'm saying all of this to say that you will begin to know your father, when you begin to look at your life through the lens of Jesus, when you begin to study his ministry, when you begin to study his response to people, when you begin to study his response through trials, when you begin to study his response in prayer and even towards his disciples, you will begin to understand the heart of the father because Jesus said that you know the father if you knew me. And in this season, that's who I'm cultivating my relationship with because if I become one with Jesus, I become one with the Father. And it's only through the Holy Spirit can I allow this to be possible in my life. Like without the Holy Spirit, y'all, I would not know things. I would not understand things. I would not get wisdom, revelation, and insight. I would not have the manifestation of him. Without the struggles, I would not see Jesus show up. Without the trials and the tears and sometimes the feelings of loneliness, isolation, abandonment, and rejection, I wouldn't see the hand of the Father coming in my life. And the thing is, your trials is actually meant for God to show up and manifest himself. We say Jehovah Jireh, which means provider. Jehovah Nisi, which means he waves a banner and go before us. You know, Jehovah Rafi, the healer. You know, Jehovah Shalom, the one who is peace. And the thing is this, once you allow the situation to just work and be processed through you, we are going to see the manifestation of Jehovah Jireh. We're going to see the manifestation of Jehovah Nisi. We're going to see the manifestation of Jehovah Rafi. We're going to see the manifestation of Jehovah Shalom, Chiskanu. You know, we're going to see so much of who God truly is to us if we just humble ourselves and repent. So before I get off this video, I just want to welcome you to repent. And repent means to change your mind, to change what you're doing, the actions in your life, to change your mindset and let your mindset become the mind of Christ. So I just pray that we repent. You know, I just repent for the way I've acted towards God, the way I've responded to him, the way I've mistreated him, the way I've approached him, the way I've, I've abused him in the way that I would speak to him. Just those things. I just want to challenge you to bring them to God and go in your prayer closet, go in your secret place and say, God, I repent. And then give God a chance to speak and talk. You know, I'm a worshiper, but sometimes God like, all right, girl, enough of that worship. Go on, let me come and talk to you. Go on, get your notebook out and be ready. Even if it's one word, even if it's a scripture, even if it's a verse, know that he is ready to talk. Even if it's just a sign, 
He is ready to talk. So my prayer is that the joy of the Lord is restored not only unto you, but myself. For all those who's watching, that your strength is renewed, that God is giving you wisdom, revelation, insight, understanding, and that his heart is being made known to you. It's being revealed to you. That I pray that you have the eyes of Christ, the ears of Christ, the mind of Christ, the heart of Christ, the thoughts of Christ. Your speech become Christ-like. Your walk and your talk are all embodying the life of Jesus Christ, the living God we serve. So I pray that this word has encouraged you and that I pray that for those who are under the sound of my voice, that the Lord would meet you right where you are at, that you will receive supernatural increase, supernatural breakthrough on your finance, supernatural deliverance on anxiety, on doubt, on fear fear on shame and guilt. I break those spirits off of you and say that there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. You are a new creation. You are a new creature. You are meant to serve the living God. You are a daughter. You are a son. You are made new that get up again after you made that mistake. Repent and say, Holy Spirit, I will keep repenting until the Lord break the chains off of me. I will keep getting in the presence and worshiping until the spirit of heaven is released. I will keep praising God's name. I will love the Father. I will adore him. And I will see the hand of the Lord upon my life. So I pray that this video has blessed you in the name of Jesus. And that you all have a good night, a good evening, or even a good morning wherever you're watching this video from. God bless you. And I love you guys. Have a great one.